for joining us. I'm Jody, and this is Oliver. Join us down on the floor with your shoes off in fire log. What's that? It's kind of like crisscross applesauce, but a little, little bit tougher. We're going to stack one leg completely on top of the other, which you'll feel in your hip a little bit. So just our starting pose today. As we sit up nice and tall, the crown of your head, which is the top of your head where you would wear your crown, you're lifting it up taller to the ceiling, finding a really good posture as we start our yoga class. I want you to go ahead and switch your, your logs so that the other one's on top. And that'll feel a little different. You'll feel it in your other hip, probably. <laughs> so these different poses that we do are good to get your body into different positions and helps you to be more flexible. Some of the poses will help you to be stronger. We all do a variety. Okay, so for now, go ahead and make it a more relaxed crossed legs. We call it easy pose. As you set your right hand down to the side, I want you to lift your, your left arm. So we're shadowing you, we're, your, we're mirroring you, I should say. Lift tall and then lean over. So you feel the stretch along the side of your body and then put that hand down and reach up first up to the ceiling with your right hand and then lean over. We're gonna do that more flowing with slow movement. So we're gonna reach and bend and take it back over. What should we call this one? I don't have a name for it, but it reminds me of something that's swaying side to side slowly. Can you think of any names, Oliver, for this one? Leaf. Yeah, something I was thinking of something in nature, something that would sway. Or maybe some kind of wave. So don't, don't lean over too much. I want you to really reach high and keep the arm high up as you lean over. Let's do it just a couple more times. We're just stretching the sides of our bodies out, warming up. Okay, good enough. Let's do some breathing. We'll do volcano. So hands are together through the center of the mountain. You're gonna travel upward and then down the sides of the mountain come the lava. So slow motion again. This time we inhale through our nose. Inhale slow and then exhale slow and just continue. Inhale and exhale. Even slower. Fill your lungs with air, and then slowly let that air out of your lungs. So don't hold your breath. <laughs> Constantly breathing in, and slowly releasing the air. Breathing just through your nose. Try one more time. We're going to turn onto hands and knees, facing the side with us, so you still can turn your head and see what we're doing. We're going to do a cat and cow. So on hands and knees, this involves moving your spine. So in a cat stretch, oh, you round your back up to the ceiling, and then in cow, you lift your head and think about if you had a tail, you'd be lifting it up to the ceiling too. So think about your spine moving each direction. And you're going to inhale in that cow when your head's up next. And exhale in a cat stretch when you tuck your head down and in. It should be the other way around. So we think about as we move with our breath, when we open the chest forward, we open our face forward, we want to take the air in. And then we want to exhale it all out as we kind of come into a smaller position and crouch in towards your Rinse your lungs, I guess. Inhale, open our lungs. Exhale, the air comes out of the lungs. If you're doing it opposite, it's okay. But that's usually how we do it with cat and cow. All right, I want you to walk your knees back a little bit so that you can kind of drop your hips so we have this straight line. Think about from your shoulders all the way down to your knees. 
So your your bottom's not out here and it's not dipping down either. You have this straight line and your fingers are forward with your fingers spread wide. And then you sit your weight back like child's pose and then we come up into, this is plank on our knees and I want you to do just that motion for now. And think about coming all the way forward so that you can drop your hips a little bit in line with your body and you're going to feel your stomach muscles work. Okay, we're going to add on to this a striking cobra. So we're going to come in lower to the ground and then we're going to lift and you're going to be on the tops of your feet now as you lift into that cobra. Okay, so go back. And then as you come forward, stay really low with your face close to the mat and then lift and extend your arms. So this is our striking cobra, which helps warm up our upper body. We're using the power in our arms, kind of like a push up. Uh -huh. If you do it several times, you're gonna feel your arms working if you're doing it right. Low and then lift. Okay, one more time. Those arms should stay out straight. My hands actually are not even moving on the mat at all. They're staying in the same place. <laughs> How'd we do? Everybody's different. We're moving on to the next thing, so don't worry about that. We're going to down dog, hips up in the air. All right, now we're on our toes and we're on our hands are flat, fingers spread wide. And I want you to pedal your heels. That means pushing one down and then the other one down. Just nice and slow. This helps to stretch out your calves. Ew. As you try to push one Ew. heel down, just notice how it feels. Don't, don't do anything that is painful. So make the movement smaller if it doesn't I feel, feel right. In the back of my foot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, from here we're gonna step forward and just roll up, taking the weight off your hands. Okay, so we're moving on to sun salutations. We're facing the side of the room. Ready? This is part of our warm up. So let's do it three times in a row. We're just going to go, go for it. Reach up and forward fold down. Start hanging. Come up halfway into monkey, flat back, and fold again. Now we go back in that plank on our toes. Step way back. We're going to crocodile down. So bend those arms all the way till you reach the floor. And then go into that cobra, just like we were doing. And then we go to down dog. And then we step forward. This time sweep on up and reach. And end in chair. Sitting in your invisible chair. For a moment. Wiggle your toes. Are you in your chair? Sitting way back there. Good. Let's do it again. Reach up. Sweep down. You're in forward fold. And now a monkey. Monkey, flatten that back. There it is. <laughs> fold. And go back to plank. Straight, strong body. Show your strength in your plank. We're not flimsy and floppy. We are straight and strong. Crocodile down and then into cobra. Straighten the arms. Lift the head. Open the chest by pulling your shoulders back a little bit. Good. Down, down. My knees hurt. Step through and sweep on up and end in chair. Knees hurt when I do that because we're pushing in. Yeah, so push your knees out a little bit. I'm so I do this. Proper alignment in these poses is important so that it doesn't hurt. Oh, Let's do it one more time. Down. Reach up and fold down. Monkey. Fold back to plank. Crocodile. Cobra. Down dog. Step through. This is the quick one. Sweep up and in chair. Good. All right. Let's move on to sunflower. So face us with wide feet, toes and knees turned out, ready to sit down to that wide squat. And we're going to have our arms here with our palms up. This is sun pose. But for let's do moonflowers first. Mm -hmm. Moonflowers. We sink down lower. Good. Really push your knees out. Don't let them buckle in like this. We want to push them out when you're done and your feet are flat on the floor. Okay. And then you just reach up, straightening the legs. It's 
So it's down and up. And this will help to warm up your legs and make your whole body a little bit warmer. So those are moon flowers. Now into sun flowers. All as we do is we sink down and I'm going to tip forward a little bit and sweep to the floor and then reach up again. So bend your knees, tip forward, and then reach up. So if you can see me from this side, I'm keeping a flat back when I go forward. I'm not rounding. So like monkey, think about that as you go down. And keep your shoulders pulled back as you bend your knees. <laughs> Try it once more. And then we're going to end in the sun pose. So we're going to sink down low, have our palms up to the sun, lift your chin a little higher so you're gazing upward towards the sun, but you're sinking lower down and challenging these muscles in your legs that you feel right here just holding this position. So not all the way up. The, the sun is not straight overhead. It's not noon. It's just, it's, it's up at an angle. There you go. <laughs> I have to pretend a little bit. Okay, so we're moving on to some standing poses. Bring the legs in for a moment. I want you to roll your shoulders. There's a little bit of a break here. Roll them up and back and down. Roll your shoulders, not your arms, shoulders. Shoulders. Yeah, you lift your shoulders up towards your ears and then roll them back and then down. Okay, and then feet are a little wider as we do our elephant swings and we we'll loosen up some more by letting the arms just be limp and swing around. No. And turn your shoulders. Your legs just stay still. All right, so we've loosened up a little bit, a little bit warm. We're going to compare poses today. We're going to talk a little bit more and, and really I'm going to ask you to use your brain a little more and kind of think about some different poses and how they're the same and how they're different. We're going to start with pyramid and triangle. We've done this before in class. If you've been with us for a while, you, you know these poses. If not, just follow us. Oh. I want you to turn your right foot out. Okay, we're mirroring you. And I want you to then kind of turn so that your whole body is actually facing that direction now. So this back foot now is at an angle. It's not facing forward anymore. So we're really facing the side of the room now for pyramid. So remember that. And for pyramid, all we do, we keep our legs in place and we just lean forward. That's all it is. So your shoulders are both even I'm not open to the side and I'm just leaning forward like I do in forward fold with my arms hanging down or maybe they're here on my, my front leg in pyramid. So remember this one's pyramid. Okay, come on up. So remember my body placement here and now I want you to go back to where we started. This same, your right foot is still turned out. This is where we started. Ah, triangle is this. Ugh. I'm reaching to the ceiling. This is your left hand reaching to the ceiling as well. Look forward. There you go, Oliver, looking so much better. Come up a little higher. I, can't. I don't want you to reach for the floor. Keep your hand maybe just below your knee. There you go. That's a better position. And then you can get that hand to reach to the ceiling. This is your triangle. Okay, come up. Now let's think. How are these the same? We're both leaning forwards. We're leaning. Ugh. I don't know about forward in each. Yeah, we're leaning Pyramid. Forwards. Leaning this way. Triangle this way. So there's a lean I'm involved. So I agree with that. Whatever. We're leaning that way. Oh, we're leaning this direction. Okay. I get that. That makes sense. Um, how about our hands? Same or different? Backwards. Pyramid. Triangle. Mm. Different. In pyramid, both arms are hanging down. In triangle, one's down, one's up. So that's a difference. Um, how about our hip position? This is an important part where we, we actually turned our hips this direction for pyramid. Whereas, so it's almost like I'm facing that wall, but in 
triangle, I'm really facing this wall. Mm -hmm. Straight on. So that's the big difference in how where your body is facing. Is it facing that way or is it facing that way? Even though my feet are in the same place. So that's something the same in our foot position. Now, I have one more for you. <laughs> so watch me first. Triangle. Pyramid. I had to move my back foot a little bit. Revolved triangle. Now my hand's on the floor, but it doesn't need to be. It can be on our other foot. So try this with me. Come with me. Triangle. You're facing the screen. You're in triangle. Now I kind of have to turn my hips and shoulders. So I'm in pyramid. You have to turn this back foot a little bit. I can't. Step it over here. Step. There you go. Now you got it. Okay. So from pyramid, now I'm gonna face the other direction and lift. This will be your right arm. How to reach for the ceiling. We're twisting. This shoulder's down, the other shoulder's up. All right, let's come on out of it. That's a tough one to do, but I just wanted to show you how they're similar poses. We have to do the other side. Okay, so we've already talked about it. We don't have to do that as much, but we, I want you to try it with your body. So now turn your left foot to the side of your room. Okay, and first we'll do it the same way. We come, we start from here, pyramid. I'm really facing this direction now as I lean forward. So go ahead and try your pyramid. Lean, lean over that front leg. Keep both legs straight. All right, come up, keep your feet in place, except for maybe this foot's gonna turn forward again as you're facing the screen now. Triangle. One arm up and one arm down. So that is the difference here and the direction your, your hips and shoulders are facing. Reach for the ceiling. You can't even see my arm, can you? There's my arm. <laughs> now you can see it. I want you to reach up for the ceiling. I don't want you to end up like this. Reach up and your chest is open towards I'm us. Up. <laughs> so there's your triangle. Look, I'm reaching up. Okay, reaching so up. <laughs> let's go right on to doing our triangle pyramid revolved triangle, which means we're facing the other direction. So let's go triangle, you're facing us. Your chest is open, reaching one arm up, one arm down. Okay, now we turn and adjust that back foot a little bit. So pyramid, lean that over that front leg. Now we take the other arm up to revolve to the other side. And if you need to come up a little higher to make this work, that's fine. Okay, you're reaching for the ceiling. Come on, come on. My arm. Turn your chest to the away from us. Okay, come on out of it. Oliver says that this is painful. I <laughs> so can't do that. We'll give him a break. <laughs> it's tough. All right, this one is going to involve some balance, though. Okay, so we're going to take what we already know with pyramid. We're going to do something we did in the last class, but Oliver wasn't with us, so he's going to learn. You guys already probably know it. Watch me first. I'm going to face this side and we're going to go from pyramid to warrior three to standing splits. Okay, so pyramid, we want to be facing this side. So set your feet. How my feet? Hips and shoulders are facing that direction, right? Completely. <laughs> Start with your pyramid. So lean on forward, straight legs. Now the hard part is our warrior three. We're going to totally balance on that front leg. So you want to shift your weight forward as you reach and lift the back leg. Try it. It might take a couple times. You might have to take a couple deep breaths and reset and try again. Warrior three takes a lot of strength and balance. Oh, my feet already hurt. No. <laughs> we try our... Standing splits. And that back leg comes up higher as we lean down and reach for the floor. Nope. <laughs> Just give it a try. We all have different bodies and it, it may or may not work quite the same. All right, bring the leg down. We're going to try on the other side. We get better as we try and try. So set yourself so really you're facing the side of the room. Split feet. So remember what we're doing. Watch for a second. It's pyramid 
hand, then it's warrior three, and then it's standing splits, okay? But we're gonna go slower, which is harder. So first pyramid, and just hang forward in your pyramid. You're doing this on the same leg. If you do it on that side, I did it like this. Oh. Now I'm doing it like this. Oh, well maybe that was the problem. <laughs> <laughs> in any case, make sure you switch sides. You're in pyramid, shift your weight forward, go into your warrior three, with your bad leg lifted. No. Reaching forward. And then go ahead and lean on forward. And that back leg is all the way up to the ceiling, right? Lift it, lift it. It's pointing towards the ceiling. <laughs> Take that leg down. Good job. No matter how it turned out, you tried. Go ahead. Do that. Okay, we'll, <laughs> we'll move down to the floor and give Oliver a break. Yeah. Face this side, give one big reach yeah. up and then a forward fold. But through all of that, we probably gained some flexibility through your legs and lean, those leaning forward positions yeah. as well as the balance helps us be stronger, more flexible in balance. All right, we're gonna step back, lower the knees. I'm gonna let you go into child's pose. Oh, thank goodness. So child's pose, forehead can be to the floor. Otherwise you would kind of relax with your hips down to your heels. Okay, we're gonna do some more comparing of poses, but floor exercises. Okay, so we're going to start by comparing Plank and tabletop. Okay, I want you to just sit in hero for a moment. So sit on your knees, sitting down, <gasps> your hands knees. behind, and pull your shoulders back. Just stay right there. I want you to, to see. Hopefully you can see the screen well. We're going to compare plank, which we've done a lot, and tabletop. We're going to talk about how they're the same and how they're different. You might already be thinking as you see this girl in these poses, ways they're the same and different. So let's do them and think about it as we do them. Let's go into plank. So go ahead and put your hands flat and on your toes, straight, strong body. Okay, let's think about what's touching the floor. All right. Hands and feet. Hands and feet touching the floor. Okay, not, a, not all poses that's true, but this one it is. Um, now that's our body position. I'm not straight. It's straight. Yeah, we're not, we're not folded, we're not bent, we're not reaching it. It's just totally straight and strong. Okay, now as we move to sit down and go into tabletop, we we're set our hands down. We're straight and our hands and feet are touching. Okay, so Oliver already got this one and you Long probably table. did it at home too. Long table. <laughs> Here's our tabletop. If you're doing it correctly, it has a lot in common with plank. We have our hands and feet on the floor. We're straight. We have a straight body. Not all the way straight. Now we do. From our shoulders to our knees, we have a straight, strong body. So they're very similar poses. What makes them different? As we try to hold this a little longer, think. What makes them different? This is easier to Okay, hold. sit down for a moment. To hold. Huh. What makes them different? Oliver, have you come up with anything yet? That was harder than plank. Oh, I think. We're just getting tired. <laughs> They're both pretty tough. But other than that, how about our body position? What makes them different? Um, okay, let me show you once more. Arms and knees. Plank. We only have, we don't have bent anything. Tabletop. So Oliver says in tabletop our knees are bent. Uh -huh. And in plank they're not. I agree. That makes them different. What's another huge difference from here? So here. Oh, yeah, you're facing uh, towards the ground. Yes. You're facing towards the yes. Where are we looking? At plank, we're looking down to the floor. In tabletop, we're looking up to the ceiling, and our chest is up. So that's a big, the main difference. Okay, good job with that. Next set of poses. As you sit here, um, let's go. Let's go ahead and sit in hero again. Set you up yeah. just for a moment, so you can turn your head easily and you can see. We are comparing two more poses. One being down dog, which we know well. We're going to compare it to wheel. Ah, so think about this. We're going to talk about how they're the same, how they're different. 
already know. Oliver already knows, and you might too at home. But we're going to go through it anyway. And let's start with jab dog. So we start by hands down, hips up. Okay, so here is our down dog. Now, what's on the floor? Hands and feet are on the floor. So same as the other two poses, hands and feet are on the floor. How is the body position different? Um, Hold on, Oliver. We're talking about just down dog. Um, is my body straight and strong? Yeah. Totally straight. Yeah. From my shoulders to my feet. It's straight. Your no, it's not straight at all. Well, um, I'm bent at my hips right now. Oh, yeah. But it's kind of straight from my hips to my hands and then my hips to my ankles. I see what you mean. It's kind of like a, a triangle, right? Triangle. Okay, so there's our down dog. Now we move into wheel. If you can't do wheel, I want you to do bridge instead. So I'll set you up in bridge and Oliver will show you wheel. Laying on your back and bridge. in bridge, you know we're just lifting the, the hips up. But I want you, we're actually comparing it to wheel. So if you can, put your hands down flat and push yourself up into wheel. Show us, Oliver. You can only do this for like three okay. seconds. You don't have to watch if you're trying wheel at home, but if you're not trying it, then go ahead. We can watch Oliver. And hands and feet are on the floor. Okay, go ahead and relax. So that is something the same. I'm gonna point that out. So down dog we're facing down and wheel. And wheel we're facing up. Oh yes, yeah. so the down dog we're facing down, wheel we're facing up. So that's a big difference. And then Oliver already kind of talked about how in down dog, it's kind of like we have a straight straight line, like a triangle, and in wheel, you're definitely rounded. So Oliver pointed that out also, like a hill. So that makes them different. Okay, this one, I actually have three that we're going to compare. <laughs> Bow. Dead bug. There's more. I have another one that's very similar. Also, rabbit. So, bow, dead bug, and rabbit. How are they the same? How are they different? Hmm. Let's go through them. Let's start with our bow. So, laying down on your belly. Bow is wheel but upside down. That's horrible. <laughs> so, Oliver's already comparing it to wheel because we're kind of arched. So yeah, uh, no. well, we're on our bellies. Okay, but let's think about bow. We're gonna hold our feet, and then to truly be in bow, you're gonna push your feet back, and it's gonna lift your head up and chest <laughs> off of the, the floor. <laughs> so this, think about bow, and the position you're in. Okay, we're going to move on to, our backs to do dead bug and we'll think about those two first feet are in the air grabbing them with your hands this is actually dead bug okay so let's think first what makes them the same what's something that's similar between both poses you're touching your wait hands and feet you're touching your feet Ah, your, uh, your hands and feet are touching. You're grabbing your feet. Yeah. Ah, that's a big one that makes them the same because really, otherwise, they feel very different. Your body position, well, we're on our backs in dead bug. Where are you in bow? You're on your belly. Not anymore. But our hands and feet are connected. Okay, now we go on to rabbit, so I want you to go ahead and turn over again. And let's think about why I chose this one to compare. Your toes are under, your forehead's to the floor, and you're grabbing your feet. So what makes them the same? Where are our hands? On our feet. So all three, that was, that was why I chose all three. Our hands and our feet are held together. Now this one's probably more similar to, oh, I don't know. They have a lot of differences, but holding your hands and feet are is the main, same thing. So I want you to choose which one you like the best right now and do it one more time. Is it bow, dead bug, or rabbit, like we were just saying? 
I'm going to dead bug. I'm with Oliver. I'm going to dead bug. You choose at home. One of those three that you like better. Dead bug. I think dead bug's kind of relaxing and I like it. <laughs> All right, no more thinking involved. Let's just stretch while we're down here. We can make this happy baby by rocking side to side. Um, Otherwise, it's the exact same body position. <laughs> You're rocking side to side. <laughs> help, help. Not too far, or we'll, you'll <laughs> be stuck on your side. The baby fell over. <laughs> All right, I want you to hug your knees into your chest. And I want you to go ahead and rock just gentle on your back. Whee! Just gentle back and forth. This is actually good for your back. Gives you a back massage. You learn a little bit about control if you're able to kind of rock up and hold for a second and then rock back and hold for a second. Don't let your neck touch the floor at all, just your spine for a second. And I want you to rock up to a seated position and go into boat. There's your boat. <laughs> and take your legs down to staff. And forward fold. This is a good test of flexibility in your legs and back. Can you come close to reaching your shins or your feet as you're folded forward? <laughs> yeah, you have to keep your legs straight though. How close can you get your chest down towards your knees? Uh, I kind of like Oliver's idea. Go to butterfly. And we're going to do the same kind of thing with your knees wide and your feet together. Go ahead and lean forward. And that's going to feel different. It's good to notice what different muscles you feel when you're stretching them. What do you think we're stretching here? If you're really pushing your knees out wide. Closer to the floor, thighs. you're going to feel your thighs, your inner thighs inside. But Oliver's aren't very flexible. His are way up here. Mine are way down here because this is one that I work on a lot to get that flexibility. So these different poses, if you feel like you're not very good at one of them, maybe you just need to try it over and over and over. I'm putting my legs like this. Mm -hmm. Me too. As close as I can be. So sometimes it's good to choose those poses that are, are challenging and, and just keep trying them and see if you can make some progress to, to get a little better at them. All right, we did a lot of talking today and I promised some more stretching. So let's go back onto our backs. We're going to do a laying twist, which I think is a very relaxing way to end class. Take your knee that's in its bent and take it across your body, just that leg. <laughs> This is a twist, but if you'd rather really just relax on your back, you can do that too. Twisted. There we go. <laughs> I give you the choice to relax how you want, but this mm -hmm. one will give you a good stretch in your lower back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh. And if you're doing that twist, I want you to switch sides and take your other leg across. Twisted. Well, we're finding other ways to twist, so if you <laughs> want to be creative with it, that's mm, fun. Twisted. It's kind of like a laying eagle. I should we call it a dead eagle? <laughs> <laughs> a dead eagle. <laughs> a lay. Dead eagle. Dead eagle. <laughs> Oliver made up a new pose today. Okay, it's dead eagle. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Great job. Thanks for joining us. And doing lots of different poses with us. Do more Great dead job. eagle. <laughs>